Pablo Escobar was known as one of the most violent and destructive narco traffickers in modern history. And while he's responsible for the deaths of thousands of people and really tarnishing the reputation of the beautiful country of Colombia, many are still drawn to his story and we all love to watch movies and TV shows about him. And like many others, I've watched a lot of these movies and TV shows about Escobar, but I do have one main criticism for all of them. I wish they would go into more detail about the actual airplanes that flew for Escobar. So I decided to do some research, and today we're gonna take a look at the airplanes behind Pablo Escobar. While it's practically impossible to name every single airplane that flew for Escobar, we do know about a lot of them. So for this video, I'm only going to be presenting the airplanes that we have definitive proof that have flown for Escobar, and at the end we'll go into some that have been rumored to fly for him. Alrighty, let's get started. When Escobar first started trafficking into the United States in the 1970s, he owned a Piper Super Cub. The Super Cub comes from the Piper J3 Cub and it's purpose built as a small workhorse that is capable of flying into very short unpaved runways. You know, perfect for a small cartel. With two seats and engines between 150 and 180 horsepower, the Super Cub can carry 200 kilos with full fuel and a pilot and probably a little bit more because narco traffickers don't really pay attention to weight and balance. Rumors are that Escobar himself actually flew some of the first deliveries in the Super Cub, which is quite the journey from Colombia all the way to the Bahamas. The original Cub is said to have ended up in the ocean, however Escobar placed a replica at the gate of his largest state, La Hacienda Napoles. After business picked up for Pablo Escobar, the Super Cub was quickly replaced by the Cessna single-engine line of aircraft, and it's kind of tough to find anything citing the Cessna 172 or the 182. However, in an interview with Escobar's hitman called Popeye, he cites using the Cessna 210 to fly to remote areas in the Amazon to move product. The Cessna 210 is a six-seat retractable gear airplane that can carry over 600 kilos. With its 310 horsepower, engine, it can take off in about 1,200 feet at gross weight. American pilot Barry Seal, who also flew for Escobar, owned a Cessna 210 as well. And if you haven't seen American Made with Tom Cruise, it's a great movie, especially if you love airplanes. When not used by narco traffickers, the Cessna 210 is a fantastic airplane that can carry a lot, fly at 170 knots, and take off on short runways. An airplane that's very similar to the Cessna 210 is the Cessna 206. The Cessna 206 shares the same 310 horsepower engine as the 210, however it has a cargo door, fixed landing gear, and wing struts. Now I couldn't really find too many documents citing the 206 during the time of Escobar, however I did find some court documents explaining how it was used to transport from the Bahamas into Florida back in the late 1970s. The 206 can cruise around 150 knots and carry about 5 to 600 kilos which is quite the deal for a small single engine airplane. Today, many are used as small workhorses, being able to fly with almost anything that you put into it. As ocean crossings and income increased, Escobar started using twin engine airplanes. According to Escobar's son, his father and cousin flew to Miami's Opelika Airport in a Piper Seneca to run a practice delivery. The Seneca is a twin engine, six person airplane able to fly at 180 knots. It has two 220 horsepower engines and can carry around 600 kilos and take off in just over 1,000 feet. And since 1971, over 5,000 Senecas were produced and it remains in production today. One of the more popular airplanes used by Escobar was the bigger sibling to the Seneca, the Piper PA-31 Navajo. The Navajo is a seven-seater airplane with two 310 horsepower engines. It can fly at 220 knots and go over 1,000 miles non-stop. It can also carry over 800 kilos and take off in about 2,000 feet. 
The Piper Navajo is cited in many documents related to Pablo Escobar, and even his partner Carlos Letter gifted a Navajo to the Nicaraguan government in 1984. You know, definitely no corruption there. Accounts from Escobar's partners cite flying a Navajo to and from La Hacienda Napoles pretty frequently, and Pablo Escobar also flew in a Piper PA-31 Cheyenne. The Cheyenne is basically a turboprop version of the Navajo, which is able to fly up to 280 knots. There's also some rare footage of Escobar arriving to his compound in a Piper Cheyenne. A very popular line of business aircraft in the 1970s and 80s was the Aero Commander. Many of these flew for Escobar from the Piston 500 and 680 series up to the 690 and 1000 Turbo Commanders. Ex-smuggler Roger Reeves flew a Turbo Commander for Escobar, which was capable of a 2000 foot takeoff and could fly at 270 miles per hour while carrying almost a thousand kilos. In 1989, a Turbo Commander 1000 crashed in Canada with almost 500 kilos on board, and the pilots lived and were identified as associates of Pablo Escobar. There are also pictures of an old Piston Aero Commander 680 FL abandoned in Colombia, which is said to have been owned by Pablo. Escobar. And here's a photo of what looks like an Aero Commander 500 sunken off the coast of Cartagena in Colombia. After seizing aircraft with ties to the cartel, the Colombian government turned them all into artificial reefs. A larger twin turboprop used frequently by Escobar and his associates was the King Air 300. The King Air 300 is the largest of the King Air series and it's able to carry 8 people or about 800 kilos after full fuel. It can cruise at 312 knots and has a range of 1500 miles. And in an interview with Pablo Escobar's hitman Popeye, he cites using the King Air 300 to fly to and from La Hacienda Napolis on numerous occasions. Pablo Escobar did have a personal favorite airplane which was used only for fun and transporting money, and this was the Learjet 35A. The Learjet 35 is capable of flying at 470 knots above 30,000 feet, and it has a range of almost 3,000 miles. There are stories of Escobar flying to Brazil with $2 million in cash and spending it all in one weekend. There's also a famous photo of Escobar exiting his Learjet along with some of his partners and family members. Now here is where things got really crazy. The large aircraft. Many ex-military transports were used as trafficking aircraft with ties to Escobar. These were not moving hundreds of kilos, they were moving tons. Airplanes used include the Douglas DC-3 or the military version, the C-47. And there are a bunch of photos of abandoned DC-3s and crash sites which are said to have been connected to the Medellin cartel. Then there's the Curtis C-46 Commando which is slightly larger than the DC-3. And there's also a very famous crash site of the C-46, which exists off of Norman's K in the Bahamas. And they say that Norman's K was used as a smuggling island before moving product into the United States. Even a four radial engine Douglas DC-6 is said to have been used for trafficking. And lastly, which is the craziest of them all, a Boeing 727 jet airliner is rumored to have been moving product for Escobar. The truth is, if there was an airplane capable of carrying a good amount and also flying a long distance, chances are that a version of it was used by the Colombian cartel. Over 140 narco-trafficking airplanes were seized by the government during the time of Pablo Escobar. And after the death of Escobar in 1993, smuggling operations in Colombia slowed down a bit but certainly did not end. And looking at today, videos and news stories still appear with drug-running airplanes. Pablo Escobar not only destroyed hundreds of beautiful aircraft, but he was responsible for the deaths of thousands of people, and it is because of him that general aviation is almost non-existent in Colombia, and I hope there comes a day where it can come back to life. Well there you have it. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe and also drop a comment below, and until then, blue skies, and I'll see you in the next video.